What is up, everyone? The CONCACAF Gold Cup is underway, and the U.S. men's national team's second match in the group stage is Thursday versus Martinique. And me, that's Jimmy Conrad, and Heath Pierce are going to preview the match and analyze what the U.S. needs to do to get the win. K Golasso podcast starts right now. What is up, everybody? And welcome to our continuing Gold Cup coverage on the K Golasso podcast. I am Jimmy Conrad. I'm running point today. And with me, as always, throughout the summer of the CONCACAF Gold Cup, Mr. Heath Pierce. What's up, Heath? How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, you had a few of in that intro right now of, of just like words that almost rhymed that it was a, it was a mouthful. It was something to do with Gold Cup. I don't remember it now, but I'm, doing good, man. I'm dropping bars. It's what I do, Heath, uh, on the regular. I want to say that I am currently in a hotel in Minneapolis for the biggest youth soccer tournament in the country, the USA Cup. But the Gold Cup coverage does not stop, Heath Pierce. So I'm Jimmy, excited real quick, to, before to get we get into, into it, have yes. you played, did you ever play in that? Tournament? I did not. Uh, my family could not afford it. We were same. very li- we were very <laughs> limited same. to very limited to to Las Vegas turkey shoot on Thanksgiving yeah. was like the farthest we we went, and yeah. it was my family's vacation. So I to be I, here now, I'm actually like living a dream, getting to come to the youth tournament I always wanted to play in. Yeah, and 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 people might be thinking, what does this have to do with the U.S. national team? Well, I'll tell you what it has to do with it, because you have to be a youth <laughs> soccer player before you can be a professional. That's soccer correct. Player. And so I wanted to go so bad because everybody talked about Mall of America growing up, and like mm. when you went, you got to go to this gigantic Mall of America at the time, what I think was the biggest mall, and it had like a uh like whatever like a theme park inside of it and whatever. And I remember just wanting to go to that purely for that purpose. Uh, never got to because obviously, you know. Uh, we, most of our away trips, we spent collecting collecting cans to be able to have the, the more money. Getting I get it. Minnesota I get wasn't it. wasn't going to be easy no matter what. So I never got a chance to go. But anyway. I, I, I agree with you, Mall of America. I did go. And I just want to state for the record that I'm here to dominate all the kids at this tournament. I didn't get to do it when I was younger. Now is the time. <laughs> They're going down, suckers. All right, let's talk about this U.S. men's national team. They've got a big game coming up against Martinique. They just eked out a 1-0 win over Haiti even though given the balance of the game, they probably deserved another goal or two, some standout performances, some blahs, some right down the middle, kind of what you expected, but nobody really necessarily took it by the horns. That said, first game of a tournament, Heath Pierce, I wasn't too surprised that it didn't look like a super fluid machine that uh, maybe our year when we were like, we saw in the nation's league. Yeah. And you said that well. I mean, this is a group thrown together, right? Mm-hmm. And I know that there's always the argument of the national team that it's a group thrown together on some level. Uh, but this is even more so a group thrown together. And the, and the fact that like most of these guys have never played together with the national team, it is clearly the B national team. And so there was just sort of those growing pains of finding a rhythm. But overall, you know, it looked like the, the first game of, of, of a tournament for the U.S. team, you know, in terms of a little bit um, not settled in, looking for the rhythm. Who's going to take over this team with a new a new lineup? And they were able to get the result. You know what it's like playing in these Gold Cups. Like sometimes you you, you grind out these results and they don't feel super beautiful. That's just the international game in general. Um, but I think it was a good stepping stone. I think a few a few performances were, were stand out to me, and and I think that's what's going to help tee up. Uh, this match against Martinique, which I think is a rare opportunity in the group that they have to be able to actually tinker a little bit with the lineup um, uh, for this game. Well, every time we did Gold Cups, I played in two, 2005 and won it. That's my flex of the day. In 2009, which we didn't win. Thanks, Heath. You were in the final. We already talked about it and didn't go well. I got concussed. I feel like if I was playing in that one, maybe the score would have been less than five goals for Mexico. I don't want to relive it. Nobody does, except for Mexican fans. Sure, I, I, I pretty much associate any any downside with you, Jimmy. Uh, <laughs> what, you know, uh, just I think about like... W- you used to say, what would Jimmy do? That was a thing that you, yeah, always, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, I had yeah, a series like, called yeah, what yeah. would Jimmy do? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, and I always think about what would have been different if we had Jimmy that day. Um, that's fair. I, I get it. I feel the same way. It's a, but, I, part of it's passing the blame, but part of it's also, uh, of course you know. yeah, you're yeah. speaking, you're, you know, you're speaking the truth and I'm not going to yeah. fight you on it. Okay. So what I learned in both of those iterations of the ones that I did play in, you do get to tinker because the quality of the opposition, especially in the group stage, there's always that one team that eh, that's the game you can you can you can play your subs in some ways. The guys that probably won't be playing the rest of the tournament, but maybe if they play well in these 90 minutes, you'll lean on them in a different way as the tournament progresses. And Martinique is our game to do so. And we're going to get into the starting lineup in, in a little bit, but you know we could get George Bello out there, the 19 year old left back from Atlanta United. I'd like to see James Sands, excuse me, Sands, uh, maybe start. He got some late minutes against Haiti to kind of kill the game off. 
Uh, Donovan Pines from DC United, 23 year old center back could be another one. Reggie Cannon didn't get to play against Haiti. So I think we'll probably see him, right? Even though I thought Shaq Moore did pretty well. Christian rolled on, I think needs to be rolled out there. You could start Busio. Maybe Williamson fits into that midfield. We have a lot of questions of where people can play. And then Daryl DK is nursing an injury. I think that's why maybe he didn't start against Haiti. He came on late. Maybe he gets to start against Martinique and start dunking on people as he does. Matthew Hoppy, I think we'll get some minutes too. Maybe Jonathan Lewis didn't play well against Haiti. Maybe this is his last opportunity. Like, hey, man, I'm going to give you this start. You got to make the most of it against Martinique. Because if you can't do it against Martinique, I don't know if I can trust you the rest of the tournament. So there's a lot of different things I think we can unpack here. But what do you want to see out of this Martinique game? And is it more of a changed lineup? Is it more of maybe seeing the same guys? Or is it more of, hey, we're trying to establish a certain style of play and we need to adhere to that. So let's see who can do it the best. Yeah, I guess I'll start with 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 a few different things. One, I, I want to set up the conspiracy theory that there are three <laughs> players from Atlanta United FC in this tournament because Atlanta didn't release players for the Olympic qualifying, and this is U.S. soccer going back after them. Like they're keeping Brad Guzan on the bench for likely the whole <laughs> tournament. Uh, George Bello as well uh, may or may not play, but you know, bringing them all in just to, to just to. Uh, Give a little dig back at the, the pettiness there would yeah. be next level. And I'm kind of here for it, even though it's yeah. not necessarily what's best for anybody. Yeah. Um, but but I, I think, you know, again, starting with the back line uh, from that last game, I thought Miles Robinson and, and Walker Zimmerman were good. What I really liked uh, is when James Sands came in and when they went to a to a to a three back line. Um, I thought that the midfield was really good and it all, it showed a, a good versatility from Kellen Acosta of making himself indisposable that he moved to a wing back, uh, type of position. Uh, the one that I really want to make sure plays is Busio. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll just lead off with, 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 with Busio, just because of the fact that during the limited minutes that he, that he had, I don't know if it was around 30 minutes or so mm -hmm. he was to me, the best player on the field. And be, he just had this ability. Uh, calm to him of for for a debut just a calm of just knowing what his outs were what things were around him sebastian legette looked more active knowing that he had this guy you know when you have when you play with a, a a good eight or a good 10 that you know that you can always feed them the ball and if you follow it you'll get it back or if then they know where all the options are they almost mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. in a quarterback sense sort of do their sort of check downs where it's like go th go through the options of okay my first out is here if this guy like just this constant awareness that i never had as a player of knowing like i'll maybe as a fullback, have one, two, three options. But I learned from guys like Steve Chirundolo and others to say, well, here's a fourth option. Here's a fifth option. Here's a sixth option when you're in danger. And obviously, with the game being fluid, you're never in the same spot really twice. Right, right. He just had this ability to know, like, when to turn, when to hit in a, a you know, kind of break the lines with a pass, when to come out with it, when to slow the game down, when to draw players in. And with a player of that quality, I think you start to see, a lot of times we use this, and, and Jimmy, you use this a lot, numerical advantages, right? Mm -hmm. Um unless you have players intelligent enough to know how to use that space or that numerical advantage, it, one player can defend two or two can defend three. If you're, if you're good at it and, and active, and he's the kind of guy that makes it so hard because he knows where those options are. So he's one that I definitely want to see in the starting lineup again against the Martinique. I think it's, it allows him to make some errors, no disrespect to them, but it allow him to make some errors and know that you have some coverage, mm -hmm. right. And know that it's, it's going to take a couple of uh, big chances for them to, to, to give up a goal. And so he makes a bad square pass, a bad back pass, takes his chances, whatever he, he's able to learn from that scenario, instead of it being against again, a debut or a second cap against a Mexico where now it becomes um, a yeah. little bit more high risk and maybe you don't put him into that situation. So, so yeah. what do we just, just, just listen, I thought Busio was good too from, from what I did see from the game. And I do want to throw this out there just as a devil's advocate because we should have a 360 discussion about everybody's performance. But as we're as it pertains to Busio, he comes on against a Haiti team who is missing a buttload of players um, from, from COVID, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe not a buttload. That sounds like a lot. But missing a few key players from, from COVID. They just had their, their president assassinated. There's just a lot going on off the field that could impact that they're probably tired at that point when he comes in they're chasing the game we're, we're in control for the most part over 60 percent possession and do you think that deters i mean obviously you're, you're talking about these little things and i see it too there's that little quiet composure and to the to the players that you were mentioning i got to play with john o'brien and claudia arena who i thought were you know, two of the best that you could play them a ball in any situation and they never got rattled. They never panicked. And more often than not, maybe 99.9% .9 of the time 
not only did they hold the ball up under pressure, but they also made the right pass to unlock that pressure. And that is a really special quality. And I think that's what we're talking about is that Busio seems to radiate that type of confidence and that aura about him and that presence. I'm already seeing people calling him the American Pirlo and I'm here for it. I love a deep line playmaker. So, so I'm happy to see that and he can control the game and pull the strings from a, yeah. from a position and that we, we haven't really had in a while, to be honest. Yeah. And look, I do. I do. I think that I'm giving him more love than he deserves in a 30 minute window against uh, the Hades B team. Absolutely. But, but again, what we're talking about is those little things when you, when you look at it and you just go, okay, there's some, there's something there, right? Mm-hmm. There's something in the way that he moves his body and the way he sets himself up being comfortable in the half turn, being mm-hmm. comfortable in tight spaces, wanting the ball in tough spaces. I thought when you go back to the nation's league, I thought a lot of our midfielders, especially Jackson Yule, I think that he's sort of stepped backwards in terms of the quality that I thought he could bring. I don't think he's, I think he's in a little bit of a funk right now in terms of what we saw from him before. I think Kellen Acosta, same thing, looked uncomfortable in tight spaces. Again, those are games of consequence, completely different than playing against, against I guess Haiti's a game of consequence, but um, somewhat inconsequential in, in the grand scheme of things. Sure. But like uh, this comfort of, of being like, I'm always an option is something that I think that we haven't had for a long time. In, in that initial. spot, in that area in that of the spot. field. Yeah, mm-hmm. of just, I am here when you need me. I will check in, two guys on my back, and I will figure out a way out of this, right? Or at least attempt to make a play there. And I think that's the thing that I noticed the most about him. Again, the game was big, it's open, it's people, you know, can criticize and say, well, yeah, but there was space everywhere. You know, you could have landed a plane somewhere on the pitch uh, <laughs> uh, because of the game had, had opened up. But there are those little tiny things that you see in that calm of like little flicks and touches around a player. You saw Sebastian Legette follow the ball and get it underneath of just understanding the game. It seemed like the IQ side of it was was um, really impressive for me. Um, and and then to stick, by the way, on, 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 the, on who I think uh, need to get a look or prove something, I thought... Um, Daryl DK didn't look great when he came in. He's one that I would love to see get a, a full run in this mm-hmm, game. Mm-hmm. Whether I, I don't know if he plays well with Azardes when they switched to a three-five-two, having both of them up there, I think is a unique look. It's a it's a completely different perspective. I think one thing that you get out of DK for sure is he's just goal hungry, right? And I think he needs to balance that of pick and choose his moments of when to be goal hungry because when you see him get the ball, it's like every time it's like when you used to play with Adriano in Pro Evolution where he had a 99 shot <laughs> and you would just dribble straight uh, and and then just hit it as hard as you could uh, because, you, you know, you had he could hit a banger. It, it's kind of like that, a little bit of like settling into the game. And I think he's done that better when he gets more minutes than having to come in and sort of prove himself late. And then... Uh, the, the other one that I think, uh, has proven himself uh, that I thought was decent was, was Eric Williamson. So you've looked at Sands Williamson and then, and then a Kellen Acosta or a Yule in there. I think it, it brings something different or a Busio, if you can work Busio into that. So I think there's just a lot of options and a lot yeah. for, the, for these players, uh, to prove. And then Jonathan Lewis, he was the other one with Jackson Yule that I think, uh, ha- have the most to prove in this next game, if they get a run, or at least in this tournament to show that they are part of. Look, I think they're 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 part of the the national team conversation, regardless. But to prove that, like, hey, I want to be the standout from this group because that gets me closer to to the best team, uh, and that best team is going to be what's what's representing the U.S. in the qualifiers. Yeah, what I'd say really quick about Jackson Yule is that, uh, well, one of the jokes we used to make of carries the magnet at times was that he was like the ten freeway. He'd only play east or west, you know, yeah. and he never actually made those telling passes to go forward, to break the lines, whether to run with the ball or to, or to make that, that little flick. You know, I remember I saw it in the Euros recently, uh, Spain versus Italy. And, and the way that Spain was breaking that press of, of the Italians was they played into the middle and they just do a little flick into that area where a Spanish player knew where to be. And they would unlock Italy, I don't know how many times. Mm-hmm. And we need players that are thinking about that, looking for it. And obviously there has to be a under- tactical understanding as to where those pockets of space are going to be and how they're going to exploit it. And I just thought Jackson, you'll seem to be playing safe. And anytime I call somebody the 10 freeway, that's usually, yeah. you know, and, and I don't think Carrie Zavagnin uh, cared for that <laughs> nickname all that much, but, but that was, uh, you know, what I would use, use to label uh, Jackson Yule at this moment. So we'll see if he can figure out a way. Cause if he can start making telling passes, we know he can do it. It's just yeah. a matter of maybe his confidence isn't where well, it that, should be. It, and again, that was where, that was where, what I thought one of his strengths were before. And, and you nailed it spot on that, that, Right now, the issue with this team specifically is there's no wingers, right? You had mm-hmm. Gio uh, Akini who playing out of position who I didn't think was, was, was great. Jonathan Lewis, who I didn't think was great, playing as sort of wingers in this thing. Paul Ariola, who, who, who likely looks injured and won't be around. So you need, 
players that can help to advance the ball into higher positions, mm-hmm. d- depending on the system that they're going to play. And Yule, I don't think is 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 showing that right now. And then when you add that to the fact that he's not the paciest guy, and if you're going to go talk about how do these players, ultimately you're looking at these players, not how you're going to win this tournament. That's one thing. But how do they fit into your mm-hmm. system mm-hmm. of the A team? If you're going to have fullbacks high and wide and you're going to be exposed, you also have to have a player that can, like Kellen Acosta has made himself indispensable because of the fact that he will bomb forward and back all day long, right? Mm-hmm. He will cover the ground if you're if you're exposed. If there's an imbalance in the team, he's going to cover that ground and show that. That's another thing that I think Yule has to be able to show is that if he if he's going to get mm-hmm. if he's not going to be great at, in the buildup, he has to be able to be that reliable person that can put out fires. I'm not saying he's not doing that, but I I would say that he's one of the ones that has uh, the most to prove looking at that first match and his last few matches and sort of just the 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 what I think is a little bit of a funk that he's in in terms of the quality that he could have. I'm not he's he definitely didn't play poorly. He, he he did he did fine, but when you when you stack that up against how does he fit into the mm-hmm, the, the mm-hmm. A national team? Um, I think he, he's got he's got some stuff to prove. No, I'm glad you brought up Kellen Acosta because that really set up his run from midfield or running from midfield into an advanced position is what ultimately unlocked the first goal for the U.S. against Haiti, the only goal where he ran through. He has a good ball, good good timed run actually. So so when he makes that run, everybody, he makes it so that the player that's on the ball got to see him. You know, sometimes players make runs and, and, you know, the player on the ball has his head down or whatever it may be, and they don't see that exact timing. Very well-timed run and, and good pass. Acosta plays it out wide to Shaq Moore, and we, we get a ball. So we have our two wing backs, ultimately our two outside backs, crossing it in and scoring very Kieran Trippier to Luke Shaw in the Euro final, where we're having these uh, outside backs in advanced positions. Now, speaking of that, you were actually – a little bit more impressed with the three, five, two, when we brought in Sands and Williamson kind of slotted into the midfield and Kellen Acosta went out wide. What formation do you want to see going now into this Martinique game? And, and just to give Martinique some love, they did have a one zero lead over Canada due to some very good pressing to, to end a little bit of casualness from Canada. <laughs> I'm sure they'd raise their hand and say that where I, this is where I, I, that was smart by Martinique. That's really the only way they're probably going to get a goal. It's not going to be from build up play. It's going to be due to a mistake that the U S make and them capitalizing on it. And that said, Canada responded well, scoring three goals in the next 20 minutes to put that game to bed. But what formation do you want to see? And let's just get into it. I mean, what would you be your ideal 11? So everybody at home knows this is what Heath Pierce thinks. Heath Pierce thinks. And, and uh, I want to be as smart as Heath Pierce. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a lot of pressure. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of pressure. Um, I mean, I definitely want to see uh, anything that's going to put uh, Busio and Leggett together in the, att- in, in the midfield. Um, I, I, again, think that when, when James Sands came on, when Eric Williamson came on, both of them proved enough that I think they should get the start. I think playing with a back three that you you add Walker Zimmerman and, and Miles Robinson into that conversation um, is good. If you had Sam Vines and Kellen Acosta, I think Kellen Acosta, you want to continue to play him, but maybe you sacrifice him in the middle to to see what you can work with, whether it's a, uh, a Sands and Erickson and, and a Busio. Really um, quick, though, really quick, though. Don't you feel like this is the game to try your kind of, let's say, fringe players because you're not going to get another opportunity the rest of the tournament. You got Canada next, and then you get into the knockout rounds. You're not just going to throw out a George Bellow at that point. Are you, like, at what point are we going to... I mean, obviously, the act, the the whole event is important for these players, right? Yeah. Off the field, their training, how they're preparing, their attitude, all of it's being watched and identified and being marked down by the coaching staff as to what this player looks like and how they can help us moving forward. Whether it's just a World Cup qualifying or World Cup itself, maybe it's the whole si- next cycle completely. So so there's no, like, if, if George Bellow, let's say, for example, doesn't play, it's not the end of the world for him in his national team career, just maybe isn't ready just yet. But if he doesn't play against Martinique, I just don't think we're going to see yet him or any other players if, if they don't get the start in this one. Yeah, this is the balancing act, right? Is you have fringe A players and then you have fringe B players, right? Mm-hmm. So you have your George Bella, who you know is uh, probably part of the future national team cycles, um, but hasn't worked himself in yet. So do you put him in game two or is that somebody where you look at a fullback position and say, oh, they're in yellow card trouble and put him in for game three to test because you have to. It's hard because you want to get as big of a sample size as possible for mm-hmm. the larger national team picture, right? And one is is going going on to have a great performance in this tournament and, and win the tournament. The second one is using this time, if you're Greg, 
with two G's. You're going to use, <laughs> you, you're going to, you, you want to use this time to see how many of these players are going to show up. Which one of these players are going to emerge and be part of the bigger thing, right? Be part of this bigger project or who can I rely on? Who can I start to trust more? Who is proven to me a little bit more than what I've seen before, right? I think a Sebastian Legette is one that you can actually go into this game and probably rest, right? Because you know, like, I know what I've got from him. Mm-hmm. Uh, you also have a Kellen Acosta that maybe you can rest and say, I know what I've got from him. And maybe tinker with those types of things. But at the same time, like, I, I, I do want to see Eric Williamson get the start. I do want to see Busio get the start because Busio is the guy that I see on the same trajectory as like a Brendan Aronson where there's a lot of questions about him of like, is he too frail? Is he too small? Is he too slow? Is this, you know, is it, what, do they have all the pieces to be at the international mm-hmm. level? And mm-hmm. then Aronson just had this curve into the national team and then going into going to Europe where you're like, okay, he's, he's clearly ready here, you know, and he's actually using his strengths and uh, avoiding being in positions where he's in a 50, 50 battle and those types of things. Very different than a central midfielder. But, but uh, you know, I, I think this allows Greg to see which of these players arises. So I think there's a balancing act, I guess is what my answer is. Um, of what well, it's players- also to, well, to your point, I want to jump in and just say that not only are you working with fringe A and fringe B, but you're also trying to work on potential partnerships and, and building rapport. It, Sam Vines had a good game. Sam Vines. Yeah, sure. You could talk to him, sit him aside and say, Hey man, we're going to give somebody else a chance against Martinique, but you're going to be back in for Canada. And he would probably totally understand it. This is a, this is a 23 man project. This isn't just about Sam Vines and, and all that, but, but there's a part of me that goes, man, I actually want to see Sam Vines and miles Robinson play next to each other for one more game. I want to see Sam Vines getting comfortable bombing up forward and, and having that rapport with the players in front of them or inside centrally. So just so they know where he is and, and what kind of decisions he makes under pressure. I don't know if we're going to get that type of, of rapport, maybe from a Martinique who's probably going to sit back and concede a lot of possession, but every single valuable minute that you can get to understand who who's playing around you is going to be important. So that's going to be interesting. I think balancing act is a great word to describe uh, some of the decisions that Greg Berhalter has. Yeah. And look, I've been in, I've been in camps before where you get pulled aside and you're like, Hey, listen, you know, I, I'm, I'm super happy with you. This isn't a knock on you or the quality right. that you put into the last game, but we just want to use this time as to get a look at a few other players. Cause in a match environment, you know how it's like, Jimmy, you play a game every four days um, in this tournament or every th- one, two, th- one, two, three, I guess every three days um, or fourth day on the fourth day you, you play a game. And so, you have, you end up having only one, you have a recovery day, you have an off day, then you have a prep day. And for the players that aren't in the mix, they're just constantly training, right? Mm -hmm, But they're training mm -hmm. in small groups. They have less numbers. You know, if you have a a number of players that are nursing injuries, it becomes very frustrating for the players that aren't playing to feel like, how do I prove myself? Right. If I can't get out on the field, it's really hard because we're doing five V twos. We're doing small sided games. We're not, I'm not in a, which again, are, are every chance is a chance, but you know, you're not really having the larger group together to be like, I want to compete. The only Mm -hmm. place that you usually tend to compete with the national team is on the pitch and matches uh, with, with your teammates. So I think that's, that's the hard part of balancing uh, these types of things because, you know, and I'm sure Greg has a plan and how he wants to rotate. And, you know, if this, then that, uh, in terms of scenario planning of, you know, okay, we're up, we win the first game. Can we rotate players for Martinique? Do we have the opportunity to do that? Um, okay. So, uh, I just yeah. want to cut in really quick. I uh, just want to remind everybody listening that I asked Heath for the formation in the starting lineup and he's yet to answer my question. <laughs> that give is me true. the goods and then give me the prediction. I, I let's just get to okay. it. Let's get to it. Let's go with, um, I'm gonna stop I wanna, deflecting. Stop okay. deflecting. I'm looking. I'm looking at the roster right now. I want Matt Turner in goal. I Ooh, want okay. Um, I want Miles Robinson, Walker Zimmerman, and James Sands back three. Yeah, and then I want uh, I, oh man, Reggie Cannon's got to go though, right? I mean, you got to. He didn't play the first game. You got to give him a run out. Yeah, Reggie Cannon's got to play. Um, but again, like are you building him back up for for Canada, maybe or or maybe this is the one. So let's say Reggie Cannon. Okay. Um, Sam Vines or George Bella, at left back or what left wing back? I think I think you've now got how many caps does Sam Vines have? Um, where where uh, he's got four now. Um, one goal in four games. Let's give it up. Yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, look, I, I I if you're going to give George Bella a run. And this it's not the, the conspiracy theory um, of bringing in the Atlanta players. <laughs> you, give him, you give him this game um, for sure. And then in my midfield, I want to go with Busio. I want to go with Williamson. And I want to go with Legette. 
and no roll on um, no roll on for you i thought christian rodon oh for gosh, sure gosh you're right i would i would leave out legit honestly and let okay Roldan yeah, yeah you're, right, you're right you're right leave 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 legit out he's yeah. he's He's closing in on on our caps, and we don't want him to pass us. So, uh, no, take him out because again, you know what you know what you're going to get from. Um, and then, yeah, so Roldan Williamson and Busio, uh, and then I'd like DK, to, you know you got to see DK's the nine, I assume. Yeah, and then DK's the nine. Hop, and then I got to see Hoppy. Hoppy, yeah, I would I would rest Zardes too. I I don't think that obviously Zardes and and Greg Brohalter uh, are there's no real there's no like mystery there on what he's going to get from him, and I think he'll be a, a, play an important role in this tournament, especially with his experience. But yeah, I'd like so, to see so, so Hoppy, Zardes, and then you can bring who's in who's on the other Charles side, Chief. Giacchini or 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 Lewis. You give Lewis another run out just to to see. I mean, they don't really the wingers aren't really mm-hmm. clear cut here. Or is that no, no, I know I'm 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 on eleven here. Did, I, did I've I give got, us a twelve? I've, I've got my back three. I've got my two wing backs, and then I've got my three, three midfield, the midfielders of uh, uh, Busio, uh, Williamson. Yeah, you need two up and top. And DK, on, and, DK, then DK and, Hoppy. And, and Hoppy. Yeah, got it, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, and so and and then you know I'd like to see I'd like to see Joe Akini, uh going up top later in the game. This is assuming Paul Ariola is, and, and he's another one that I think has been around for a while. So okay, um, so here, here's the one thing I want to add too, because when people watch this game, they think, oh, we're the U.S. They're Martinique. What should I be looking for? You know, when you're kind of a casual or or not necessarily a neutral, but casual, and they're just thinking, well, we should beat this team 5-0 just because they're Martinique and we're in the U.S. Let's get rid of the scoreline and just talk about what you actually want to see really quick. And then uh, we can we can let everybody go watch the game <laughs> when it happens. The, the, it's a few things. I want to see a few emerging players step up and look a, a grade above. When I talked about Busio before, he looked a grade above. And the things that he did, his body language, his movements, his comfort on the ball, to me looked like he was a step above both teams, the players on both teams when he came in. I want to see that for 90 minutes from him. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and then I want to see them control this game. I think this is a game that you control from start to finish. Not only in possession, not only playing beautifully, not only taking chances and taking risks at the right time, but getting your goals... And then just putting your foot on them, the whole the whole way, right? Stomp it, stomp it on yeah. throats. Yeah. You want. yeah, exactly. You uh, you want to stomp on their throats, like get your goals and just a full professional performance, start to finish. Where? Yeah, I'm here. I'm with you on that. At no moment do you see do you don't, see Martinique pl- get a half chance or or right. another chance where they made a you know they shut off for a second. I want to see that level of professionalism from from the team to be like we're better than them. We're going to beat them in every category, but we're going to outcompete them. We're going to outfight them, and that you go on and you go okay. That was not even close. Even if it ends up being one nil, it wasn't even close. Now, play, not playing to the level of our competition. From yeah. your lips to their ears, Heath Pierce, thank you so much, as always, for doing the Kegelasso podcast with me, especially for the CONCACAF Gold Cup. You're the man. Thank you for listening, everybody. And as a reminder, Heath and I will be your string pullers on the Kegelasso pod throughout the Gold Cup. And also remember to follow us on Twitter at Pod. And of course, we are available on Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, and on YouTube at youtube.com slash We'll see you soon.